Hi, good evening everyone and welcome to the latest edition of Western Marble Arch Interviews and I'm here with Olivia Weinberg and Oliver Goodman and I'm Gemma Michon and we're here tonight to discuss everything business. So I'm going to hand over to Olivia to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Olivia Weinberg and I founded my brand OW London in 2015. OW London is a luxury homeware and tableware brand. Um, all our products are 100% British made and I'm really passionate about supporting British craftsmanship and manufacturing. In terms of how I started my business, I've, I've always been really interested in design and products and brands. And I actually worked in a number of different industries, which I think have all led me to where I am now. Um, and just to give you a brief kind of synopsis, I was a journalist for about six years um, where I was reviewing and writing about art and art exhibitions. I then worked at a big advertising agency um, where I worked on some big budget campaigns for you know, major brands where we were helping them tell their stories and articulate their visual language which involved months and months of research and that really opened my eyes to the world of brands and branding and, and how powerful a brand can be if the messaging is right. And I then worked in-house at a couple of luxury brands, so I kind of saw things from the other side. And one of those brands that I worked at whilst I was there was undergoing a huge rebrand. So I got real first-hand experience of almost what it was like to build a brand from scratch because there was so much change happening. And I think it's a combination of, of all those things that have kind of played into where I am today and really gave me the appetite to want to grow and start my own brand and business. Thank you. And over to you, Oliver. Hi, my name is Oliver Goodman. Um, I set up Oliver Samuel Associates five years ago. I have had in total 15 years worth of real estate and executive search um, experience. So I worked for a larger executive search firm for 10 years. Um, there's always the ambition to set up my own practice, but at the time I just didn't think it was right until five years ago. I felt that the executive search market was dwindling, less retained searches going on, um, approaches were being outdated, so I thought, how can we make it different? So I created Oliver Samuel Associates on the basis of focusing on mid-level to senior level hires using the executive search approach. We focus solely in the real estate sector based in London, but with a European outreach. Um, and we cover everything from real estate private equity to investment management, to property companies, to developers, um, leading into, into to lending organizations too um, and that's a really quick synopsis about about myself and the firm thank you so if you can all see i have an ow london espresso <laughs> cup that um i am very much in love with because i'm a big coffee drinker and so olivia i just wanted to ask you how did you create this stunning design and they're so unique on the market because when i was researching crockery as you do there was a lot of white um very standardized so please tell me a little bit about how you come up with these unique styles sure so design is very much a process um and i'm constantly kind of finding and seeking inspiration um from all sorts of things whether that's traveling or you know a piece of art or visiting an art exhibition or you know, an interesting shadow on the ground that, that might, you know, be a really interesting core. And I kind of am constantly collating all of that and, and keeping a, a mental note of it as well as, as well as a kind of sketchbook of, of ideas. So that can always be a starting point. Um, likewise, colour plays a big role in all of my designs and I might think of a new colour palette or a specific colour that's a design might stem from that um, but I think in terms of well, I'll come on to, to the thing you said about everything being white in a minute but when I 
come up with a design, I really try and um, push that design as far as I possibly can. Um, so I might play around with scale and proportion. I might hone in on a particular section and magnify it. And I think often really interesting things come out of that when you really push something as far as it can possibly go and, and often when you don't even expect it. So, so that's kind of the process. In terms of what you said about whiteware, you know, we're very aware that people's homes are very white and, and people like white tableware and neutral colours. And I think what's unique about us is that colour is really important, um, but the idea is that you can mix and match, match our pieces with existing white collections you might have. So there's no need to, to buy an entirely matching set from us. Um, you can pick and choose and curate your own collection so that you know our consumers all have a slightly different bespoke collection because they're picking and choosing their own colors and designs. And they can integrate that into what they already have and introduce pops of color into their homes you know, where they want. Um, so I think that is, is one of our unique points. And, and as I said before, we are 100% British and that's a really key selling point for us, which, which comes with challenges, but it's something we're very proud of. Well, I certainly enjoyed picking my mug and it took quite a long time because I'm quite specific. Um, and it is a beautiful piece, so I do encourage everyone to have a look at your website. Um, now over to you, Oliver. Uh, there's lots of real estate uh, recruitment agencies out there, um, and it can be a mindful of trying to get the right one. What's your USP? Yeah, so it's, it's a good question. Um, there are loads of recruiters out there, and there's a lot of property recruitment agencies out there as well. So I think we, we classify, classify ourselves as a consulting organisation. So it's slightly different. I think the way to look at it is over the last two decades, the standard process for recruiters is to advertise jobs and for candidates to respond to those jobs. We approach it in a completely different way and that goes back to our business model where we use an executive search approach for, for all levels. Being in one sector, spend, having 15 years worth of experience in one sector, we hope we know the market well. So what we do, is we don't advertise. So for what, whatever the mandate is, we go out and build a shortlist specifically for that role. So we don't wait for candidates to come to us, we go to them. So for instance, it's understanding the cultural, it's understanding the dynamics, it's understanding the, 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 the short-term aspiration of an organization and knowing the, the, the candidate market and the real estate market as a whole, we have the knowledge to go out and build that build that pool. Um, secondly, um, it's the case where we're extremely discreet in how we go about the search. Some organizations, let me say majority of organizations want to be extremely discreet when you're looking at a senior hire. So if you've got an old form of an approach by waiting for candidates to apply for jobs, some people can guess who it is. However, if we're actually approaching candidates and actually understanding the cultural fit, understanding the experience, understanding what they've done in their career and what they're looking for, it allows us to really shape that shortness better for, for clients. So I, I guess it's about being proactive rather than reactive in our approach. Um, we've got one office, as I said, in London, but over the last five years, we've done plenty of European recruitment. And that's, again, using, using the same approach. Um, so our network is, is key. Um, we hold confidentiality as a crucial part in terms of both a candidate perspective and also client's perspectives. Um, and it's trust. It's not the case where a recruiter puts in a candidate just to get a fee. From our, from our side, it's about a long-term partnership, ensuring an organisation trusts us to put in the right talent. Um, so I guess that's what our USP is. Yeah. Thanks. The past couple of months with COVID has brought devastating effects, um, especially on small businesses. So Olivia, I'm sure you've had plenty of challenges. What has been the biggest one for you? And also, what have you learned in this period? I think, of course, it's been a massively challenging time for everyone. And, you know, the retail industry has suffered hugely. And, you know, I don't think we'll ever be the same again. Um, I think challenge-wise, you know, our wholesale orders 
pretty much stopped overnight as, you know, literally department stores, shops, all our stockists, you know, were closing their doors. And, you know, there was very little build up to that. So that just suddenly stopped, which was really worrying. And, and there was absolutely nothing that we could do about that. Um, on the flip side, and almost simultaneously, we started to see a real spike in web sales. And, you know, we started to think that there was a real e-commerce opportunity here, um, which I guess was, was a silver lining. And actually, we started to focus our energy and attention on more of an e-commerce strategy. And, and we had the, the space to do that because there was no distractions from worrying about, you know, things that were out of our hands. Um, so I guess it has been very challenging. There have been some positives which have come from it. And, you know, like anything, it's about responding and trying to pick yourself up and trying to move forwards. Um, so, yeah, it's been really difficult, but there have been a few positives. And it's true. We were pretty much in lockdown overnight. So the businesses like yourselves who are, like you said, are really trying to get business through the door through department stores. But overnight, doors were shut. It was a state of panic and for everyone else. And with you, Oliver, uh, real estate has had some serious complexities over the past two years. We had to deal with Brexit and now COVID. Um, you must have seen a huge amount of um, increase of applicants over the past two, maybe four months. Um, and it is a challenging time for everyone. How do you encourage your applicants to move forward? People have got so much uncertainty right now and they obviously need a job and especially in specific areas like real estate as your role as an app as a yeah yeah, yeah. so how do you do that i guess to, to to manage candidates expectation is key because that goes back to the trust point beforehand however let, let me answer it in a slightly different way sure. i think with with brexit every organization was trying to plan how to, 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 to get over to Brexit, but it was impossible to do so. So the majority of our clients had that at the back of their mind, but continued as usual. So when that translated into the recruitment cycle, it wasn't really affected okay. in, in our kind of client pool. So that, that wasn't really an issue. I think COVID has had more of an effect um if you're looking at certain organizations they found different ways to to re reclaim income so real estate funds they get management fees so it hasn't really been affected however some of the clients like property developers or property owners when they're looking at gaining or collecting the rent or refinancing developments they've yeah. been more more affected by by property um and covid itself so um Due to the furlough scheme, um, we haven't seen a true effect of, of the labour market and redundancies in the labour market yet. That will happen more in the next two, three months. I think some organisations will genuinely look to, to, to cut back to, to, to reduce costs. I think other organisations will look to use this as, as a restructure um, and see where they can cut costs for, for, for a restructuring point of view. Um, the the labour market as a whole I think in the next six months or so, will in our circle or our, our sector will recorrect salaries. I think over the last five to ten years, especially at a mid-management level, um, within certain positions, salaries are hugely inflated. I think that's just due to simple economics, which is supply and demand. But now there'll be less of supply of jobs. Um, there'll be a more of demand from candidates, which will actually probably e even out that your salary. Um, expectations of certain candidates um, so it's an interesting dynamic but I, I still feel from speaking to clients over the last two three months it hasn't affected them because they're still seeing opportunities they're seeing again in, in our client pool the distressed real estate sector might come bring them opportunities in the next, next six months which will relate to to more recruitment needs as well um, so it, it's a double-edged sword really where some organisations will be looking to reduce staff and won't be recruiting, whereas other organisations will look, be looking to exploit the situation. Um, going back to the original point, it, it's just ensuring we're there for our for candidates and for clients to, 
to give them as much support and as market market intelligence as we have um and ultimately trying to 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 secure them with with talented individuals great thank you um this is quite a broad question and i uh, i don't apologize for it because i get asked it a lot what are your careers highs and lows i'm going to start with olivia so yeah i guess it, it's maybe quite early to talk about you know major career highs and major career lows um but as any business owner will tell you you know there are setbacks all the time um and i guess it's how you respond to them that's the important thing um i think something that springs to mind is i remember going up to visit my factory in stoke-on-trent which is the heart of the potteries and where all our products are made and having what i thought was a really productive exciting meeting where we were talking about new products and what was in the pipeline and, and next collection um left feeling great and that was on a friday and i remember waking up on monday morning and receiving an email from the factory's lawyer saying that it had gone into administration and literally you know everything crumbled in an instance you know i built a really good relationship with that factory things were finally moving smoothly we got to a really good point and it suddenly felt like i had to start all over again so that 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 was a really pivotal moment you know i ended up finding a factory which is much better i'm still working with now and you know ended up being a good thing but at the time it was it was a real difficult thing to kind of deal with in terms of highs I think it would have to be getting stocks in Fortnum and Mason. Um, it was kind of a years in the making. I was I was sending emails so often, um, hounding the buyers um, for, for for months on end. Mostly they were ignored, and and finally somebody responded to me, probably out of sheer frustration, and invited me in to have a meeting, um, which ended up going very well. Um, they subsequently placed an order. Um, and they are now our biggest account. Um, we've got a great relationship with them. They order pretty much every month, if not more. And, you know, certainly pre-COVID, things were going really well. So, so you know, persistence is key. It's kind of another lesson learned there. Well, I remember watching a TV programme and seeing your mugs on the coffee table. And I was like, oh, that's a proud <laughs> moment as a friend of yours. So that's, I was surprised oh, that wasn't, wasn't in one of your highs. Um, uh, Oliver, uh, over to you for that same question. Um, I think so far the high has to be setting up the business. Yeah. Um, Ten years at a previous organisation and, and making a step or taking a step in, in setting up your own business is, is daunting for, for, for anybody. So that, that has to be a career high. We've, we've had some great success over the last five years and, and hopefully that will happen in the next five years and, and beyond. Um, I think the career low, um, it's, it's quite interesting. I don't think anybody goes to university to think I'm going to be, be a recruiter. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's all into it. Um, but my, my career load has to be when I first started executive search or recruitment, struggling. I think in the first two, three months, I wasn't good at it. And that wasn't for a lack of skills or a lack of, of trying. It's the complexities which people don't know, which, it, which are involved when doing a search, looking at the candidates, looking at the, can, the clients, understanding the sector, and that takes time to develop. Um, and I persisted with it, and I'm glad I did, because we've had some great results, and, and I know we're going to have some good times in the future. So I think that the career low would have been when I first started, um, and really getting my head around it and persisting with it. So a very broad question I'd like to ask you, which is probably if I asked you pre-COVID, you probably had a clearer view of where you wanted to be in five years. So now we're in COVID, we're about to still be in COVID. Where do you would like to see yourself and your business in five years? Sorry, Oliver. Um, me first. Um, so the, the, the plan in the next five year, years is to gain a greater market share in, in the sector we're in. Um, that's first and foremost. Um, 
we have to increase our market share internationally as well. So we've got a good, we've got a good um, presence in the UK. We can grow that further, but also to grow that across Europe and hopefully further afield. Um, the, the other ambitions is to possibly look at bringing talent um, from other sectors, not real estate. So in essence, providing a backing to individuals that haven't had the, the ability to create their own recruitment businesses um, to, to expand Oliver Samuel Associates into different sectors, maybe rebranding it, that then that organization to different names and, and building up a multiple range of, of recruiters under different banners. However, Oliver Samuel Associates will only focus in real estate, but having the ability to diversify under different banners. So I think that's something we'd look at if, if the right talent comes around. And Olivia? I think, of course, it's important to plan kind of three, five years down the line. And, and similar to Oliver, you know, we'd love to expand internationally, um, increase our stockists, you know, have a, have a bigger product offering um, and all those kind of things. But I think actually what, what, what we've realised and certainly what, what's been demonstrated over the last few months is that we live in a totally unpredictable world where anything can happen at any point and it can throw a huge curveball at your plans anyway. So I think what's important is to build, you know, an agile company where you can respond and react to things quickly and efficiently. So I think trying to, to put things in place that, that hopefully allow you to do that is, is where the focus needs to be because, you know, who knows what the world's going to look like in five years. Very true. We don't even know what it looks like next month. Um, so I'm going to spin it away from business because we are here this evening because of Western Marble Arts Shaw. Um, Olivia and I have been members with our family since we were probably your kid children's age. Um, so you're both clearly very proud of your Jewish identity. But what does the community mean to you? And I'm going to start with Olivia. I think, yeah, like you just said, you know, Western Marble Arch, you know, it's very special to me. Um, my grandparents and my great grandparents were founding members. Um, myself and my entire extended family all got married there. Um, and it's, it's something I really want to continue, a tradition I really want to continue with. You know, my son just turned one and he's been a few times, obviously less, less so recently, but, you know, I, I want to integrate him into the community and, proudly take him there you know maybe he'll he'll do hebrew classes there like like i did um and just do the tradition um with my family because you know it goes back so many years for me and it, it's such a special place oliver also been a, a member not for so long a good few years now but um i think what was unique about the community is very warm very very unique and warm compared to any other synagogue i've been to so i was welcomed straight away which was lovely um and you can you can just feel the special special connection of all the members in the shul um i think it, it also leads to the fact in terms of what we want to pass on to our son is is a jewish identity um looking at the traditions um why marble arch and, and the uk jewish community is is special and that's what we want to pass on um also have, has as much uh I guess membership as as yourself and Olivia, but as I said, um, whilst being a part of Marble Arch, it's been it's been great and been very warm and um, no, it's, it's it's been a lovely experience. And um, my final question on this topic is: as you both of you are relatively new parents of over a year or a year even, um, obviously as we just touched on Jewish identity, what values and uh, traditions do you seek to be really important? That you want as you said Oliver to pass on to them Oliver again <laughs> um it's it's the Friday night meals it's it's the I agree <laughs> it's, it's, it's the Shabbat it's the it's the community it's, it's understanding uh the, 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 the broader kind of traditions of being Jewish um and and understanding the importance of that um knowing the high holy days knowing the, Seder, knowing Shabbat, it's um, it's it's having a well-rounded son um, who who actually knows the importance of Judaism. 
Olivia? Yeah, I totally agree. It's it's that sense of family and community and, you know, feeling part of something and, you know, the warmth that all of our traditions and values bring. And it's it's continuing to, to bring up our son in the same way that we were brought up with the Friday nights and, you know, marking those holy days and being together as a family. Um, yeah. Well, that is the end of my question. So I want to thank you both so much for joining me this evening um, and also to Rabbi Sam Taylor for organising it this evening. And I want to wish you both well to you and your families. And I hope to see you all very soon. I will now continue enjoying my espresso in my OW London mug. And I bid you all good night. Thanks, Gemma. Thanks.